Okay. So, worried about my audience a little. And worried about what I'm going to say. Of course, my image a little. A lot. Worried about all of these things. Fix this. So, worried. Uh, being a Christian growing up, you know, come across in the Bible. Never really got to read the Bible till I was, uh, sad to say, so I was uh, incarcerated. It's my first private time, you know, never really had my own room until then. But I had my own room, but never really had it, you understand? Like, and that's the truth. You know, I lived, uh, I lived in a house that had two openings, and for some reason, my privacy was always invaded. Uh, so jail was the, like the only time I had a like, private time. Unfortunately, uh, I learned a lot. I taught myself a lot. I had a lot of privacy without the outside influence. So, and the Bible was, you know, I, I had the, I had a chance to master the Bible. And I, it's, and there is like things about worry and things about certain subjects. So it tells you never to worry. Now with wisdom, I learned to think because the temptation is very big and strong. The, it's like as good as I am, the more temptations like in, in details, just for, just per se, as good as you get, the more you ignore women, the more naked they come around you. You understand that? And this is for kids too. So like, it's just the more you try to be positive, the more they say the devil attacked you, but the more it just comes. I don't have to use the Bible on this subject, but the more you try not to do something, the easier it becomes. And it becomes uh, more available to you the more you try not to do it. Uh, that's just that's just how some ways life goes. So the way to do that is, you know, you try to keep it as a minimum. You don't try too hard. You don't try too little. You just do it. It's just like, it's like Nike, just do it. So I worry now, though, uh, even though the Bible told me not to. I worry about what my children is learning. And now, uh, if you don't know me, uh, I have no full control of what another person do. Uh, if I did, I would be violent or I would be aggressive. And if, if I can tell you that right now, that means I'm not being violent and I'm not being aggressive. So everyone is doing what they want to do and my children may be seeing certain things. and. This one particular child, uh, maybe a baby, uh, I'm worried about what she's learning or what he's, he's learning or around uh, the cleanliness of the environment, the, uh, you know, the delicate things that's, that's more important. Because I, as my children was a baby, I washed, I washed the baby out, the, the, the bottle out, because you, you give them spoiled milk and people don't understand. You, you know, you you should give the baby what you want to give your baby. I went through that myself. To know if you ain't going to drink the baby bottle yourself, do not give it to the baby. Do not give it to nobody. If you're not going to do it yourself, don't do it to someone else. So I have to worry about things like that. So I worry about what they teach in school because I have older children too. I have, uh, and then we have older people that we be around at all times. I mean, people that's coming of age and you don't know what they learning in school. You don't know what they learning. So to teach the proper things in school, I don't know how that's gonna go because the system is so, you know, so messed up. They hire people who who are probably not good to their own children. So what you expect them to be as a teacher. And my thing is not to take the children to school. I'd rather homeschool my children and keep them away from outside influence. Because outside influence 
uh, it comes in home and the adult, the parents is responsible for the child, for whatever he did. But say for instance, he learned something in school and he bring it home. The, the first thing, you know, the law will say is that he, they learned it from the children. And then that children passes on to another child and that child passes on to another child. And it all came from school. You know, they gotta be in class with more than 20 people. Uh, some maybe less, some maybe more. So that's a bad thing. And the media, I know I'm jumping the subject, but the media, movies, TV shows, uh, cartoons, all of these things influence our children commercials, uh, brands, music, you know? You see a bottle of liquor, my child probably never saw a bottle of liquor or saw me with another, uh, saw me with a bottle of liquor. Mate, say for instance they didn't, right? And then they see it on TV. Now they know how to drink or they see it with another person. And you know, the system is made where we have to work to provide for our kids. The first thing, the first thing the judge would say to me is, or whatever, the first, put, the first thing they say to you is, oh, you have to take care of your child. Okay, so how about I sit at home and I teach him how to be a leader, how to be self-educated, teach him how to read, teach him how to write, teach him how to stay away from uh, being fooled by another person, uh, teach him how to stay away from lies, teach him how to read through people's minds, People teach him how... Uh, well, read through they, they lies, teach him how, or teach her how to be uh, not just uh, school or systematic intelligent, where you know you have to kiss the teacher butt to get a, uh, a, a uh, more or less, teach them how, how to own their own business without having that education because the education is something that someone has to give to you. But knowledge is something you give to yourself. See, I can teach you something, but that don't mean you're gonna take it in. And then that doesn't mean it's the right answer or it's the right thing. So when you self-educate yourself, you, you read between those lines. I take this, I take that, and then I go with my solution, what I think is right. It may be important, it may not be important. I may have to use it in life, I may not have to use it in life. But those skills and elements to learn and know the difference is more important than the knowledge itself. It's how to perceive what is knowledge and what is BS. Because a lot of things is taught and a lot of things is BS. And um, there's things that can't even be taught in school, that doesn't even be taught in school and not in the streets either. That actually makes more sense and nobody can even understand that. Um, so, as you know my, my program and my, uh, my, my business, we are uh, running a nonprofit in human services which teaches people about uh, anything that uh, a human can use as a, you know, as a, as a source, uh, a source of knowledge, uh, you know, anything that, that they, they can use, like knowledge, you know, uh, domestic violence partnerships, uh, we are, I mean, I'm against domestic violence and it doesn't have to be the two people that's involved with the domestic violence it could be outside it could be where are you who you are around that can condemn you to feel you know to hit the other person to take it out on the other person it can be uh the lack of resources that you have the lack of knowledge that you are receiving the, the, you know, the pressure that's holding you, that's condemning you to feel that, you know, you have to take your anger out on this next person. And, uh, 
I can say not experienced it, but I have seen it. I can, I can, I can say I, uh, I'm a bear witness of, not even a bear witness. I, yeah, I witnessed it with my eyes. <sighs> yes. Um, yeah, because, you know, like, I, and I witness it now. Now that I can see it, you can, you can tell that it's just not the person that, that's being violent, that is part of the domestic violence. It could be, uh, you know, some people don't, it's not as humble as me. And you know your job is treating you one way, and then they they wrong, and then you got other people treating you wrong, and other people treating you wrong, and like some people like to take it out and fight it. That doesn't justify anybody else treating him wrong or treating her wrong. The violence is coming from the wrong treatment around you, and then you know if you humble enough to pay attention to everything that's going on around you, and you you realizing that. You know, that person in front of you is not the problem. The problem is everything around that person. Because if you feel that that person is the problem, then that person is definitely not intelligent enough to make you aware of your surroundings that is not them. So it's not that person. Trust me, there's... there's there's a whole system based on it. Like I, I want to go on a computer and pull up the statistics of the domestic violence and and different different race and different cultures. So that's how they separate us. And you can once you once you see those numbers and once you read those numbers, you can tell that there's something going on. The problem is bigger than what you think or what you expect it to be. And a lot of people like to ignore that. You know, numbers don't lie. That's all I can say. Numbers don't lie. They can. They people can put the fake numbers there. Those numbers are there for a reason. And if you can't see if those numbers is high in certain race or in certain certain environment, you can't see that it's not it's not those people. It's that environment. Like there's something else. Okay, maybe that environment need help with a certain situation. And I think that's what it is, you know. There's a saying of uh, back in the days they used to take the, uh, the, the 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 darker the darker colored men out the household, and uh, and a woman would have to stay alone. Uh, I know uh, Jay Z mom is, you know. I hear that she's. It's kind of like it just makes sense. So if they was doing that from. Back then, I mean, I, and it's happen. It's still happening now. I just think that you know, dividing and conquer exists, and it's just more sneaky. So where you feel you to blame for it, so you become a, a domestic violent person when. It was all set up for you to be a domestic violent person, cause it was set up for you to take get out the house anyway. And you thinking is, oh no, it's just, oh man, I was going through this, I was going through that. I'm sorry, so many bad things is happening to me. No, that's the way your story was written to be. And uh, you know, they say if you don't know your history, then you're bound to repeat it. So educate yourself and think. I know I, I probably sound like a comedian. I am a comedian, but I'm being serious. And this is something very important that I like to tackle out. You know, I always get to this point where I'm worried about my kids and how, what they learning and what they doing. It's not right what's going on. It's not right. Point blank period. What I want, yeah, I want my kids. I want to have custody of my kids. I want to have my own place. I want to live in a mansion. This is what I want. Trust me. If you don't dress like it, you don't walk like it, and talk like it, you're not getting over those things. They're going to say, oh, no, no, you can't afford it. You can have the money. They're going to tell you you can't afford it. Why? Because the way you look, the way you talk, and they're going to look up a bunch of other things and say, no, 
that's what they do. If you're talking that right stuff and you you dressing like it and walking like it, then they can say, okay, come here. Yo, you don't need money. And that's the trick. And that's, you know, when you, when you don't say nothing about it, then it happens to you. And now it's too late to talk about it. Because you didn't say nothing about it before when it wasn't happening to you. When it was on your side. When it's against you, that's when you want to say something. So, you know, speak up, say something. It's a free country. It's a free world, you know. And uh, uh, to go beneath my belt. Uh, not beneath my belt, but like uh, beneath the image, you know. I can look over things. Ratchet baby moms. Now, I don't blame you. I'm not blaming you. Well, about your baby moms. Just let's put it like this. I'm, I already touched the subject. That is... I'm, I'm tired of it. I'm just done with it. Now, you can say whatever you want to say about me. But... Come on. Our kids got to do better. They got to look better. We can't be dressing them with tights. We can't be dressing them with little dresses. Uh, the kids, you know, haircut or grow their hair. Groom them, well groom them. Wash their face every morning, brush their teeth every morning, make sure their drawers is clean, make sure their shirts is clean, make sure they dress the part. You don't have to take them to school. So don't say, hey, I'm rushing them to go to school, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta do all that by myself. You can start right at your home and say, hey, you know what? This is my family, and nobody's telling me to do with my, nothing to do, nothing. Nobody's telling me what to do with my family, and I'm going to start here, and I'm going to teach my kids to be like that. Because the system scare you to tell, them, to tell you that you, they got to go to school. Unless you love money, and you say, hey, I, I, I need this money, I got to have this money, which is you choosing the money over the child. It doesn't matter what you say and how you say it. That's what you're doing. Unless you have that addiction, you say, hey, you know what? My children, we're going to run our own company. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. I'm a self-educate y'all. We boycott in the schools. That's the next movement. Because in these schools, most teachers are not even from the neighborhood. You have some teachers from the neighborhood. But they already thinking different because they're working for the city. And when you work for the city, you're trained to think different. I work for the city myself. There's a lot of things we have to turn our head to. And there's a lot of things. We act like we're not human beings. We have to. Why? Because we are getting paid for it. We're getting paid to say, hey, no, you can't do this. No, you can't do that. That's our job. We is getting paid to do stuff that we normally would think is wrong. That's our job. So when you send them to school, they are getting paid to do what's morally, or what you may think is morally wrong. So when you don't send them to school, now you're teaching your kids, household, family, whatever you want to do in your household, clean, whatever. That's which your rights are stand, really stand for. But once they go out the house, they are going into another, you, you're sending them to a whole different system where they're going to, they, from kid, whatever they send, you know, whatever age you're sending them, they got to learn how to live through that system. They're going to be in school for the rest of their life and work for the rest of their life. Or they're going to go into a different system where they fall out of school and go into the jail system. But you're teaching them to walk on their own in the path of systems. Is what path they fall in that they have to live in for the rest of their life. But that's what you're teaching them. So, I'm out.